That roar that goes up, it's just a stunning moment in football, just to feel that. It's historical, it's the oldest cup competition in football in the world. Gallant Blackpool will turn what seemed defeat into one of the most dramatic victories ever seen at Wembley. It is the biggest game that I've grown up with. Um, so yeah, FA Cup final was always a massive, massive event. He's dropped there again! And Simpson scored! And it's Didier Drogba! The highlights really is, is growing up and, and watching the FA Cup on TV. Cantona! The oldest cup competition in the world at the home of football. And there's nothing more special. Congratulations to Chelsea, back in the winning mood again. The FA Cup's huge for the guys who work here because we know it's the jewel in the crown, um, so when it gets here there is definitely an excitement level that it's, it's arrived and it's on the horizon. It's a massive piece um, and it's kind of quite hard to kind of grasp that until you actually start working amongst it um, and, and even then you probably don't appreciate how much else is going on, you're so consumed with what you're doing. Around the FA Cup my primary role is operational delivery with our TV and radio partners, both for domestic and international coverage. Being a senior brand manager essentially means that you have to look after all of the branding requirements and that would be across all of the FA Games uh, held here at Wembley. My role responsibility is to look after the Wembley pitch and prepare it, recover it for all the games that we have uh, in the stadium. It's about playability for the pitch, but also aesthetics as well. We want to make sure that when the fans come in, they go, wow, they see the pitch. We also want to make sure that everyone watching at home sees the exact same. Our key remit is to look at the Emirates FA Cup right from the start of the season, right from the uh, extra preliminary rounds from August up to the final and tell good news stories at various points in the competition. The planning phase is going before, before Christmas time, more or less. You're looking at kind of October, November last year, we start sitting down with our uh, events delivery agencies like Event360 to start chatting through what the day is going to look like. In the planning stages, we, we liaise with all departments, whether it be the security side, the venue side, through to ticketing, through to commercial, uh, comms, a lot of work alongside them. So everything in everyone's different areas, all the good work they do, is all fed into the event team. You have to start working with both clubs on the final, they are the finalists ultimately, so a lot of work goes into sort of keeping up dialogues with them. What we require from them, from my side of things, obviously in, in broadcasting you need, um, you need their buy-in, you need their assistance in terms of getting player interviews and manager interviews, um, filming access. We went to both clubs for content days, so um, we go into the clubs and take really nice photography, like high-end, head-to-head photography. The marketing team will then feed into that as well in terms of the stadium, the stadium branding and, and the look and feel of the day. To make sure that everyone is aligned on that is, is hugely important and then you, you see it all sort of play out on the day. So this, this year there'll be um, some special um, things being done around uh, at the final in the, in the build-up to the game. There's going to be some banners that are unveiled in memory of Ray Wilson and Ray Wilkins who sadly passed away. We have the RAF involved very heavily, their 100th year celebrations, so that obviously was a big part of the day from, from, kind of, from day one. We've got a choir for all standing on the pitch in their football shirts, you know, representing their clubs from all levels of the football pyramid, singing the iconic FA Cup hymn. It's a great honour to be asked and um, I mean part of the FA Cup final, I mean the history of the FA Cup, we all love that don't we, so it's just going to be a brilliant day. start to walk around all the teams to talk to them. I walk the building and just to see where we're at. Because we are in transition and conversion, you want to make sure that there's nothing of the last event showing. There's nothing left up and that whatever they've done to a branding is of a level it should be. I have a level of 
this is an iconic world-class stadium? Is that branding iconic? You want to make sure that are we prepared and ready for our event? Is there anything going to be up that's going to cause a problem for our customers? But it is check, check, check. And we're going through all these levels because the operation is absolutely huge. The broadcast side of things, we have worked quite closely with the Cup FA commercial team, with our partnerships guys um, who are looking after the key FA Cup partners, the likes of Emirates. Emirates, obviously, as title partner. Um, will have quite a strong presence here at the ground, their cabin crew um, and other ways that they like to activate such as their player escorts, um, you'll see them walking out with the two teams. It was very much about the finishing touches, it's all about the digital inventory around the stadium, be it the, the tier 2 ribbon or the perimeter LED boards or the giant screen outside, it's finalising the running order for those things and making sure all our partners get what they're contractually entitled to. For us, we know the FA Cup for the FA, it's a jewel in the crown. And for us, we want everything to be perfect for it. We're after that shot of the pitch looking pristine, the red carpet out, two teams, people walking out, dignitary meeting the players, and you've got this fantastic pitch behind you. And for us, that's what we work towards. FA Cup final, we've got four people working on this, all pretty much flat out. As we have semi-finals, we then obviously take some of the assets that we've used on semi-finals and the clubs that progress from semi-finals to final. As a whole, the team are working collectively to deliver the best possible event and the best possible final at Wembley. Budweiser are an active partner. Um, we've been working with them across the season as well. The hospitality aspect of, of the semi-finals and the final is huge for them. Uh, being in that sort of industry, um, it's a great way for them to showcase their product with the Budweiser uh, on tap in the stadium. We will move circa, hand move, nearly 3,000 barrels of beer in the week. Essentially we'll have Carlsberg in and around our cellars, we'll have to take them out, remove circa 25 to 30,000 bottles of beer from fridges and then obviously bump in the Budweiser product. They're running around these concourses ensuring that we represent our venue, our stadium, and uh, the sponsors appropriately. In terms of the number of people we have on site from a broadcast side of things, um, it's a, a bit of a step up. Um, we're looking at sort of upwards of 650 broadcast crew and personnel on site, which certainly is more than for any other event we host at Wembley that, that I work on in an FA capacity. We always aim to get everything into as good a place as possible on about match day minus two. So Thursday, we want to be as good as we're, we're going to be um, pre-match. So Friday should really be a day for just ensuring everything is printed out, all of the briefs are in place, um, any last minute rehearsals uh, are kind of done. But largely by Friday, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a good place and ready to go. The final day itself is the busiest and most hectic day of all. It literally is just running around, um, following after one thing to the next. There's plenty of different areas that you're kind of buzzing around to, um, and with every phone call and every text and every email that comes in, you're moving from one place to the next. First thing in the morning, we have a catch up before the briefing that Tom has, just to see are we where we should be. So we're looking at all the staffing levels, because when you're booking 5,000 staff, you want to make sure that you know they're going to turn up. We produce an event guide and that has timings and role allocations for everyone and I, and I can't stress enough, it's very much a team effort. Um, so everyone is allocated roles, they'll produce an event guide that literally goes down to the second. I think with that you can plan as much as you want, you can have your schedules down to a T and down to the second, stuff happens on the day and you have to react. Yeah, just first kick and it's not pumped up. As you get towards that, that three or four hours before the game, suddenly it just comes in, in waves and waves and it's not really much, uh, much breathing time then. We do trust in ourselves to have gone through all those processes to know that it's going to look spectacular and will deliver a great branded event. We've also got media activity, so we'll be working quite closely with them, uh, both in the stadium, outside of the stadium, uh, in the lead up to the game and, and also during the game as well. Whilst the final is a celebration of all 737 clubs, a lot of work does end up 
being put into working with the finalists um, to make it the best event it can possibly be in terms of aesthetics and in our PRing it, I suppose. We all start uh, preparing the pitch eight hours before the game, before the kickoff. Um, about two and a half hours before kickoff, we then hand the pitch over. The control room um, is huge for the stadium of this size as it should be. There's probably over 50 staff just in the control room. But the operational staff inside are reliant on radio messages, telephones and more importantly CCTV. We've got three levels and, and they're all huge, 35,000, level 1, 17,000, level 2 and then you're up to about 39,000 up at the top. Um, so every single level has its own CCTV operator and its own radio operator and they're talking to their equivalent level manager. The level manager out there, because it's so big, is safety officer level. So the room itself is, is incredibly functional, incredibly important, and it is the hub for the day. You know, everything goes through there. Once the, um, the announcement goes out that the uh, town stars are open, for me, I, I, I quite often sort of hear that and then I go back to whatever I've been doing and then you, sort of, you might be inside, come out of the office and walk into the stadium and suddenly there's fans everywhere and you're like, wow. We have two very busy periods during the day, um, just before kickoff naturally as people are really building into the stadium and uh, getting ready for kickoff. Um, but being ready for half time, that's, that's our moment and that's when we put a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm in to make sure teams are motivated and generally to make sure we're ready for those guys that come out at half time. We are sold out everywhere across all our hospitality space. Oh, I'll have between 800 and 1,000 uh, hospitality staff as in front of house staff that actually operate throughout all our space. As soon as the guests leave to go out to their seats, then immediately all our teams are straight onto the floor again and returning around that room. So when the guests come back in at half time, the room looks pristine again and that happens after half time as well in preparation for full time. Our priority is to make sure everything is set out for, for the clubs. It's the club's day, it's showcasing all the good work that the FA does, but it's, it's on us to get everything sorted so the players, the fans, the staff, they come to Wembley, they have an absolutely brilliant experience and they go away thinking, that's an iconic venue, that's an iconic event and a, and a great FA Cup final, but you want to be working on it. And I think when you enjoy what you're working on, you, you over deliver and you, you take pride in what you're doing. And that's definitely the, the philosophy we have in the, in the events team. Takes on Jones, nearly squeezed it in. Hazard! Michael Oliver hits Chelsea an FA Cup final penalty. Hazard rolls it past De Gea and Chelsea lead Manchester United. Oh, is that the moment? Manchester United lose any chance of winning the FA Cup. Congratulations to Chelsea. Back in the winning mood again. You know, to be stood pitch side at the point where you're, you're queuing the teams and, and queuing kickoff and, and working on all the plans, it's overall it's just one big highlight for me to, to work on, on the FA Cup final. I'm incredibly proud of myself, proud of the team um, and, and the wider team that we work with. We've got a great bunch of people that we work alongside um, who make this day come alive and I think it's a sense of pride on a personal level that all of us have come together to deliver it. FA Cup is just so, so special and a special day and I think at the end of the day it's not one of the events that you feel tired at the end of, you just keep on smiling because it's such an amazing event. You feel that vibe around the stadium and it never, I've said to people that if you don't get the tingle on every event that you work here then grab your coat and go. Something you've watched as a kid and you suddenly get the chance to work it, you suddenly get the chance to be around that preparation, it's an amazing buzz and you just can't beat it. It probably wouldn't be what it is unless all that work had gone in, so um, that's, that's, uh, that's the way it is and probably wouldn't have it any other way.